Scotland and Australia, the Sunday game of the Autumn Internationals. Thank goodness it's on a Sunday because Saturday is already pretty jam-packed full of games. But um, yeah, we'll go through the squads, some of the predictions, some stats, recent results, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one uh, is going to play out. It is on Sunday, like I mentioned, 2.15 2 uh, local time. I think that makes it 3.15 in the morning here in New Zealand, which is a pretty hairy time to be getting up to watch some rugby, but there you go. Um, and Roman Poit is the ref, and it's his last uh, game at test level. Anyway, I think he's going to retire from tests and stick to uh, the domestic game in France for a wee while before hanging up the old boots. So congratulations to him on the, I think, a 70-odd test that he's refereed. That's um, no small achievement. But to this game, uh, recent split between the teams is pretty close. Three to Australia, two to Scotland. But the most recent two uh, being Scottish victories, if you can call them recent because they're in 2017, one in Sydney and one in... Um, uh, in Edinburgh so the most recent one of all is this emphatic 53 points to 24 game that's the Edinburgh one um, not a heck of a lot of the same faces some uh, but yeah largely kind of changed squad since 2017 as you could imagine but yeah even even ish split between the sides uh, in recent years if you can call 2017 and earlier uh, recent for the Scots they've got their big guns back in the likes of Hogg and Russell and um, Hastings and so on so that's kind of Good news for them. Um, Australia, on the other hand, without a few key guys, but we'll get to them in a second. For the Scots, uh, it's Schumann, Turner, and Ferguson. So that's the same front row as played up against Tonga uh, last week, and they were pretty solid. But uh, believe it or not, the Aussie set piece, at least the scrum time, has been pretty good as well. So that will be uh, a good test for them. Skinner and Gilchrist in all new second row. Uh, Hodgson jobs to the bench for this one. Um, again, I guess it's just guys coming back into the squad. Uh, Richie Watson and Ferguson, though, that's Matt, are the, uh, the same back row as we saw last week. I'm trying to remember how many tackles we saw old Hamish Watson getting, and I don't think it was all that many, but I think he's talked about kind of coming back from an injury, if I remember correctly. So... Um, yeah, maybe we'll see him kind of be a bit more present. Like Richie, I thought, was everywhere, and it's usually them in tandem. But um, anyway, we'll see how uh, the Mish goes. As you guys, if you follow the channel, know, he is certainly one of my favorites to see in action. Uh, Price and Russell's the 19 combo, so Price is the same. Russell's back. Um, so who doesn't like to see Finn Russell play? Pretty much nobody, so that's good news. Expect to see some excitement from him. Uh, be interesting to see how well embedded he is. I mean, he knows the guys around him, but it's his first time with the Scottish Scottish squad uh, for a wee while because he would have been with his club. Uh, Sam Johnson, Chris Harris is the midfield. of two two drops out. Uh, Sam Johnson is uh, is retaining that number twelve jersey. I should have mentioned that Kinghorn is not in the twenty three either. So that's a bit unfortunate for him because he had a pretty good outing last week at ten. But I mean. That's just the thing with the guys coming back into the squad. Some guys will drop out. Uh, Graham moves to the right wing because Hoggy is there at fullback as captain and Duan van der Merwe, who had a pretty good game for Worcester last week, is, um, is there on the left wing as to be expected. Kyle Stade, who scored four tries last week, that only gets him a spot on the bench. Uh, Rufus McLean's not there. Um, Hastings is in. George Horn is back in. Ashman is also there. Uh, he wasn't available last week. So is that his first test or second? I know he's still relatively young in the international scene, so good test. Batty and Kibble are still there, like I mentioned, Hodgson and Josh Bayless is there on the bench as well. So certainly a bit of chopping and changing, but as I mentioned, kind of to be expected with um, with so many of the guys who are based in the Premiership coming back into the fold. Uh, for Australia, I mentioned they're going to be without some guys. They shouldn't be, given the test window is open, but they're Japanese-based guys were essentially vetoed from their clubs, which is not supposed to be a thing, but, you know, uh, from playing on the tour. That's a whole issue in itself, but there's going to be no Karevi, Cooper, and McMahon. I think Karevi is probably the biggest miss, just given his physical presence in the midfield is irreplaceable. Uh, but Quade Cooper has been running the show from 10 uh, as well in recent times. McMahon's only gotten, kind of gotten token minutes, so... Maybe the, the the least important of the three to, to be missing, but I mean, he's certainly a good guy to have when he is available. Who have they got? They've got James Slipper, Falao Fuenga, and Alan Alatoa. So that's the same squad that played against uh, Japan a fortnight ago, although Alan Alatoa is starting rather than being on the bench. Rory Arnold's back in the fold. Big, big, tall piece of timber. Old Rory Arnold, great on wall defense and great at line-out time, so good to see him back. He partners Isaac Grotto, who played against Japan. Leota, Hooper, and Valtini. Kind of like Scotland keeping their back row the same. 
uh, Australia are doing so as well. So Hooper's captain, him up against the Mish is always going to be a fun one to see kind of who can get through more work. Um, and uh, yeah, Rob Liotta is only a few tests into his career as well. So he'll be looking to make his presence made kind of physically because he is a big old unit. Uh, Nick White and James O'Connor, the 19 combo. So like I mentioned, Quaid has been running the show at 10, but he's not available. So it's Jock. Um, yeah, he's been coming back from a long injury and only had a couple of games from the bench. So don't expect him to be kind of fully up to speed, I would imagine. It may take him a few minutes to shake a bit of the rust off, but fingers crossed he has a good game. Paisami and Ikito uh, are the midfield. So Paisami, he's a good player, busy. Um, I don't think he has the same physical presence that the old, um, that Samu Karebi has, but I guess that's not his job uh, necessarily. He, um, But yeah, like I said, he's got a big old work rate, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of partnership these two guys have. But... Yeah, it looks, it looks better with Karibi there, I'm just going to say that. Uh, Pitaya and right are the wings. So Pitaya moves up from the bench to play on the left wing. Callaway, Callaway moves from the left wing to play fullback because Reese Hodge did an injury in the Japan game and has left the tour because, yeah, injury. So, yeah, they've had to make a few other changes. McInerney, Bell, and Tupo are the front row replacements. Look to see Taniela Tupo come on and cause some havoc because he is... One of the more devastating props in World Rugby will scout, and good to see him back in the Wallabies fold as well. It's been many years. Is it 2017 since he's played for the Wallabies? It's been a long time. Um, so, man, imagine having Arnold and Skelton on the field at the same time. That would be fun, but I would imagine one replaces the other. Uh, Samu's there. Tate McDermott. Kirtley Beal uh, is back as well. I think he was kind of called back into the fold with... Um, with Reese Hodge's injury, otherwise I don't know that he would have got a call up. Could be wrong. Uh, and uh, Izzy Parise is there. He's maybe the guy who's going to best fill that kind of crash ball role that we see from Karevi uh, if he gets some game time. But he is another one who's had some injury woes. Um, yeah, I mentioned the last five. It's pretty close. The average score across the last five games between these teams is 30 points to 24 in Scotland's favour. But this result kind of blows out that average. Uh, a fair bit so it's usually kind of pretty close stuff there's a 21 15 in there there's a 35 34 there's a 23 22 uh and there's a 24 19 so yeah usually the games are pretty tight you'd have to say um statistically it's an interesting contrast because apart from their games against new zealand where australia kind of led in some pretty soft tries or you could argue some well-worked tries from the all blacks the Aussies have been defensively very sound and conceded very few clean breaks. In some games, literally none against like the Springboks and the Pumas. Um, they kept France relatively quiet, averaging kind of three, four clean breaks conceded a game. Again, apart from the All Blacks games where it was like 14. So yeah, uh, when they play teams not New Zealand, defensively the Wallabies looked very organized and very kind of hard to crack. Uh, whereas on the flip side, Scotland regularly uh, tops 10 clean breaks generated each game. I think barring Ireland and France games in the Six Nations, everybody else they played, they got 10 plus uh, clean breaks. So which one of those aspects gets on top? Do they cancel each other out? Uh, will be a pretty fun one to watch. Um, I think the Scottish goal kicking might have been a wee bit better, but the Aussie line out is a bit better. So um yeah it's kind of a hard one to separate the two teams rank three and rank seven based on that aussies should win but take the world rankings with a grain of salt at times scotland are at home pretty tough team uh to beat at home you'd have to say uh predictions wise the um the rugby forecast algorithm is tipping scotland by one point and the bookies have pretty much got it evens i think they did have the aussies by half a point so pretty much expecting this one to go down to the wire. What do you guys reckon? Do you think Scotland bolstered by uh, their premiership and um, top 14 reinforcements will have too much for the Wallabies at home? Likewise, the Wallabies missing some of their key players. Do you think that will hurt them? Or do you think the Wallabies likewise bolstered by some guys that we haven't seen for a while? The likes of Beal, the likes of Arnold, the likes of Skelton can get the job done away from home. You guys let me know your thoughts. If you want British and Irish Lions gear, it's still on sale. Check the link in the description. Um, time to stock up on some discount gear if you're keen. But other than that, you guys let me know your thoughts. And uh, I will talk to you again soon. See you later. Bye.